What's good, y'all? Hope everybody's having a blessed day out there. You know what I'm saying? Hope you're doing well. Thank you for tuning in. It's Rap Mythology, the reincarnation of Ramakrishna, a Hayoka empath, and I'm kicking brand new flavor in your ear, that brand new flavor in your ear. Uh. Today, we're going to be talking about this dark magic, man. That, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> this dark magic that y'all doing behind closed doors that y'all think that nobody know about. <laughs> I just know from me, I remember when I first woke up, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> the first thing I started doing is getting into magic spells and, you know, trying to control this one and that one. And, you know, my ego was too big to see how I was, um, how manipulating other people wasn't the best route to go about things. And when you first wake up, you realize, damn, I got the power to do this and I could do that. And, you know, that's kind of what sold me on this whole thing was a magic spell. You know, when a girl and whatnot. But sometimes these things are not wise to do. So, you know, I'm going to save you all the trouble of going through these things. We're going to watch a video about putting a spell on somebody to, to bring him back into your life for a relationship. You know, um, this is a video I found on YouTube. I think this woman is very knowledgeable. Um, I'll put the, her name and the link to the video in the description. And we're going to talk about some ethics when it comes to um, doing love spells and magic spells. Well, I'm bringing you a ritual today to how to make that person that hurt you so badly come back to our feet but crying, miserable, missing us, not being anything without us. How to bring that person crying. Please hit like to the page and subscribe to my page so you can yeah, see new rituals happening. that I'll be bringing on a weekly basis. This is a ritual that we bring in order to go ahead and, and get that person that has, you know, damaged your feelings, that has hurt you, um, that has stepped on you, that in one point of, you know, your life has betrayed you. Uh, you're still in love with this person. You still want this person back. You see the inner good part of that person you just went through a bad you know uh situation with this person but we still want to have this person back but then again we also want to have this person hurt and cry and and do all the things that we went through our ingredients are an onion a lime an orange red pepper black pepper honey a knife candle i'm using white it could be not black the per the picture of that person and three pins, whether thumb tabs or whatever they may be, the pins. We're gonna go ahead, we're gonna cut the onion in half. This is what's gonna make that person suffer, the same way we did. Okay, once we cut that onion in half, this one's standing better, we're gonna go ahead and use only half of it. We're gonna place the picture of that person for the face to go directly on top of that onion. And we're gonna pin the face to the onion. After that, we're gonna go ahead and grab the red, black pepper. It doesn't make a difference which we use first. I usually like using the red first since it can help the black one stay better up there. Okay, after we've done this, we're gonna go ahead and cut the lime in half. Okay, we're gonna try to get it to where it stays there. We're gonna cut that lemon, in, that lime in half. What is the lime for? This is the part where I want you to use all and everything you need. Why? Because every time we squeeze that lime in there, we're squeezing our feelings to what they made us go through, to what we're wishing mm -hmm. upon they go through. She's not using that much emotion, but the emotion. Okay, we're gonna squeeze this yeah, lemon on it. Apart. And we're gonna go ahead and pour our feelings out. We want the same feelings that we had for them to go ahead and suffer. Okay, if we need the second one, we're gonna squeeze she the second one as far as you wanna go ahead and wish. <laughs> we're gonna go ahead and squeeze. 
for the next three days. We want to go ahead and sustain this to um, in a dark place in our in our house, whether it's something that doesn't get any light. Why? Because this is the time that we need to go ahead and have this person suffer the same thing we did. So what I want you to do is take it out of the dark place for five to ten minutes. Okay, never leaving the candle on at any times all day. Why? We can go ahead and cause a fire. This is not what we're looking for. We're only giving the energy meanwhile we're in front of that ritual. Um, wishing upon exactly what we went through. The same cry, the same suffering. To notice what you, he, they had with you. That that without you, they're nothing. Um, that you offer them the life and what they did to you, the same thing you want to be done to them um, so this is the time that we're wishing for the next three days three to five minutes that candle should be on then we're gonna go ahead and place it back to that dark place after the sec after the third day we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna go ahead and cut that orange what are we gonna do with that orange orange is the part that makes it come back what happens is we need a hole in the orange so what I usually do I just cut the tip off makes it easier for me and then we're just gonna cut a hole okay then that orange I've never seen an orange used before in dark the magic. hole should be this is big enough real, this is some dark magic right here to this where we can go ahead <laughs> take the pins off you only care about yourself and grab the, the paper not the other person Okay, and we're gonna go ahead, push it in there. I want you to push everything in there. This shit look like it's gonna work though. Word. This shit look like it's gonna work, so. Once we push everything in there, it should look like this. Mm. We're gonna grab the honey. This is where we're supposed to go ahead and wish that's just, that's upon that person the coming honey. back. Even though sweetness. it's crying, devastated, yeah you know, broken down to pieces as we were, we want him or her to come back. The hair or DNA would make Once we pour that open. honey, we're gonna put it in the center. We're gonna light the candle for the next two days, except that we're not gonna keep this in the dark. We're gonna go ahead and push it to the light next to a window, next to we can have that sun hit it. Um, not outside, inside your home. But next to a window, next to some light, for it to sustain the light. And wish upon that person going back to our feet the same way. Uh, crying, devastated, but to return to our feet. For the next two days, we're going to go ahead and light that candle. We're going to wish upon. After the second day, I want you to go ahead, take it to the trunk of a tree. Light the candle again. Leave it there. The trunk of the tree is always a live place to be. That means it keeps everything live. It keeps revolving. It keeps growing. Mm -hmm. um, so this is where we want our ritual to be. Light it up. Leave the plate there exactly. Obviously not the life or anything. The ingredients that you took. Leave the candle on and you have been finished with your ritual. Wow. Well, thank you, my friends, for being here. I'm Zippy, your medium. Where on a weekly basis, I will be bringing you different rituals to better your lives. All right, now let's talk about it. The picture and the name is good. The picture and the name is good in this spell, but it would be even more potent if you use the person's hair or their DNA. Like you got a straw or a utensil that they use and you have the actual, actual um, DNA on the item or um, you have the person's hair or fingernails or something like that. I believe would make the um, spell a little bit stronger if you incorporate the other person's DNA. This spell is not for me, but I can't sit here and be like, this is something that nobody should be messing with because everybody's situation is different. Also, in my opinion, on a spell like this, you're gonna need some help because all magic is is tricking your subconscious mind. But you're trying to bend the will of another person I would think that you would need to call on some little demon or entity to assist you in making this person's feelings hurt because you can't do a spell like this and then think that you're just gonna sit there quiet and not do nothing and then everything is gonna happen to this person and they're gonna be all hurt and all of this. You're gonna have to actually do something. So in order for you to not do nothing, you would need help. You know what I'm saying? But um, 
in order for you to just do this by yourself, this particular spell, and to me, wouldn't have that much power on another person, right? Because magic, what she's doing is you're tricking your own subconscious mind into manifesting the outcome that you want, right? But you're trying to bend another person's wills to match what you want. So some type of scenario, some type of event, they're going to have to deal with another person and they get hurt by that person or something like that or see you with another person. Something's going to have to happen for that person to be hurt. You know what I'm saying? So for that, I would use some help. You know what I'm saying? Like some type of little demon or something, something that's going to, that can do some type of trickery in order to hurt this person. And this is when karma and shit starts getting involved. So this is this is complex. This is dark magic, in my opinion. But all those things that she's using, she's using black pepper, red pepper, um, the oranges, the onions. All these things have frequencies. They give off a certain frequency, right? That's very um, low level, very subtle, right? So you put in all your intention, right? Let's say your tears, all your intention into that liquid did you see it forming at the bottom of the plate you put all your intention into that frequency and it's almost like a transmitter it's going to go to the another to the next person and affect them on a subtle level i wouldn't recommend this though i would recommend that you be by yourself for a little bit for a little while i would recommend that you be by yourself for a little while learn how to have a good time with yourself learn how to be in your own company and enjoy yourself and I would do that for a little while before I start thinking about trying to bring such and such back and all of that. Now, again, this is because I'm mature and I've been through a lot. So back in the days, I might have done something like this, but I don't agree with it at this point in my life. And I feel like you doing something like this, this could potentially backfire, right? Because if you leave a person because they hurt you, right? They left you crying, miserable, right? And you had to move away from that person. Why would you want them back so that they can make you feel miserable again, so that they can make you cry again, and you can go over that same um, lesson all over again? The purpose of you getting into that relationship, right, or what the outcome should be of you getting into a toxic relationship is learning that you should never deal with people and, uh, of that nature again and, and find a way to deal with somebody that's a little bit more on your level that's empathic or whatever that, that can relate to you. So if you get out of a toxic relationship and then you want to bring the toxic relationship back to you, you didn't learn anything. So I said, so that's why I say that this is a type of spell that could backfire on you because you bring back a toxic person into your life. You'll see that you have the power to do that and that's kind of enlightening in a way, but you're going to bring more hardship to your life. So having to do something like this is being codependent. You know what I'm saying? When you feel like you need somebody or you have to make them feel a certain way, you have to make them feel all the hurt that you felt and all of that. That's kind of attachment and being codependent. These are low vibrational um, emotions. And that's why a person feeling that way would do low vibrational magic to try to control another person. I would expect a kid that's in high school or college to be doing something like this, you know what I'm saying? Somebody that's learning themselves, figuring themselves out, learning about relationships, I would expect, you know, doing something like this. But um, a female or male that's more mature in age, I would be kind of looking at you sideways if you feel like you have to resort to something like this to have somebody in your life. What I would do is um, I would be focusing on self, right? And I would be asking the universe to bring me somebody that's right for me you know what i'm saying if i want to be with somebody else i would be asking my ancestors the universe god to bring me the right person for me you know what i'm saying i would be asking you the, i would be asking the universe to bring me the right person for me not this toxic person that i just left that hurt me you know what i'm saying i wouldn't be so interested in getting revenge and, and seeing that person cry or whatever because they what did they what did they did to me me i don't know i'm different i would have probably been kind of ready to move on you know what i'm saying and move on to the next thing so i would have been asking the universe please find me 
the best person for me or the person that's right for me at this time and been patient, dealt with myself, healed myself from being in this toxic relationship because you have to heal yourself after being in a toxic relationship. You just don't want to go from one relationship to the next. You got to heal yourself from the trauma that you went through while you were in that while you were in that relationship or you won't even be good for the next person. So yes, this is a spell that can be done, you know. It's I, I would consider this dark magic, um, lower vibrational, but it could work. But you see that it takes time, right? She said for the first three days she had this, she did the spell in the dark, and then the next three days she put the she put the stuff in the light, and that was interesting to me. That was um, creative, right? But, you know, this is something that you're going to have to focus on. You're going to have to put your energy into. You're going to have to, you know, thinking about, you know what I'm saying? And you could be using this, that time to put energy into yourself. Instead of putting energy into bringing that person back, you could be putting energy into healing yourself. So instead of putting the time and energy into getting that person back, you could put that energy into yourself, right? By taking spiritual baths, by healing yourself from the toxic relationship that you were just that you were just in, right? By focusing that energy onto you and bettering yourself instead of thinking of, you know, how can I get this person back? And I want them to come back hurt and crying and you know what I mean? Wanting that revenge, right? So that's actually hurting you because you're not taking the time to build upon yourself, right? Your energy is going out into making this person hurt. And you're not actually taking the time to better yourself for the next person. You know, so this is some dark shit. You know what I'm saying? So ladies, like if you're in a grown adult, men out there too, because we be doing this shit too. You need to think, you need to really think about doing a, um, before you do a spell like this. You need to really think about um, the potential outcome that could happen out of this, out of bringing a person back that hurt you or made you cry or may put you in pain. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And, and from my point of view, it doesn't make sense to bring back a person that puts you in pain just so they could do it all over again. Yeah. Change doesn't happen overnight, right? I know the way I once was, it took me a long time to change and be this way now. Change does not happen overnight. So yes, people do have the potential to change, but let that be a natural process. Don't be trying to change them on your own and, you know, force them to be thinking a certain way. Let, let it happen naturally. It's better that way. But doing it this way, you're just manifesting lower vibrational energy. And you, you know, you're going to end up with a reflection of yourself. Somebody who wants revenge, somebody who's bitter, you know, somebody who's attached and can't let go. You know, what you attract is what you are. So, you know, doing something like this, you're going to attract exactly, you know, that intention and energy that you're putting into it. All right. So I hope that helped y'all out there. You know, something a little different. All right. It's Rap Mythology, the reincarnation of Ramakrishna, a Hayoka empath, kicking that brand new flavor in your ear. Peace.